Which E-mount wide-angle zoom lens should you buy? There's a bunch of different Sony options. You've got a Sigma option, you've got a Tamron option. But what about the original 1635 F4 from Sony from 2015? Go on, I'm listening. This actually might be one of the best value wide-angle zoom lens for Sony E-mount right now. Let's talk about why. I, like a lot of you, suffer from gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Something new and shiny comes out and I want it. Squirrel! I try it out and I convince myself that I then need it. When I look back at all the real estate videos and photos I've shot with this over the years, speaking of which, this video is sponsored by Motion VFX, who just came out with a pack which if you shoot real estate or aerial content, you need to annotate things for your clients. This is just a fantastic tool for Final Cut. It makes it super easy. We'll chat more about it later on. Just because there's a new lens out doesn't mean this one is bad. I've shot million dollar houses with this. The client loved the work. I loved how it ended up looking. There's not really anything I'm getting out of a new 1635 that I don't have with this lens. And by that, I mean in terms of how it looks. The autofocus is fantastic. It's from 2015, but with all of Sony's newer bodies, the autofocus and the lenses just work so well together. And I can't say I've ever had any issues using this in autofocus. Following realtors around as they're doing tours, as I'm moving in and out of spaces between darker and brighter environments, I've not ever once looked at the video back from this and gone, ah, the autofocus failed me there. Now the argument for having an f2.8 doesn't really apply specifically for real estate, even for landscape, for architecture, because you don't want that shallow depth of field. You actually want more in focus so you can see more. The people viewing this don't care that something is in focus and something else isn't in focus, which we perceive as looking better. They want to see everything. They don't care about that. I'm normally shooting at f4 often a lot higher. And I would encourage you to do the same if you are shooting real estate too. The cost of this is actually now a lot less than it was a couple of months ago, where the argument for buying this really didn't make a lot of sense. But since the newer versions have come out, specifically the 1635 F4 power zoom from Sony, this has dropped in price quite substantially. Right now, this is 945 on B&H. It's about $200 cheaper than the 1635 F4 power zoom. But I saw this used on B&H the other day for $700. And I guarantee you, if you look for it used, you will find it for ridiculously cheap as well. So many other people out there falling for gas and selling this to buy something new and shiny. This is the only wide angle zoom out there from all the ones that Sony makes, from the Sigma ones, from the Tamron ones, from all of those, this is the only one that has OSS, optical steady shot built in, which means you can actually use this handheld if you have one of Sony's older cameras that doesn't have active stabilization built in, or if you have an FX6 and you just need to have a little bit of stabilization so you can use it handheld. This is the only one that has that built in. So that is something to consider. And you're getting that for less than most of the other options out there. So this video is sponsored by Motion VFX, and I wanna show you their new plugin that I've been using and just how easy it is to use. Let's say I wanna draw an outline around this little shed they use for their toys and all that kind of thing. So add the M Tracker 3D directly to the clip, then click on track. What this is gonna do is go through the whole video clip and see where there are points that can be tracked. Once it's finished, hit copy track. That's gonna copy the tracking information. Go over to your titles and then M Tracker 3D area. Let's use this one, drag it on top of the clip, just like an adjustment layer. Click on it, go paste track. The data has been pasted on top of there, what it already got. Uh, and now it knows where all the points are and I can literally just draw a shape to track. Join it up and now it's, it's all on there. As simple and as easy as that. It's a little bit off, so I can actually just adjust that after the fact. I could also curve that a little bit more if I wanted to, but it's squared in this case. And just really quick, really easy. You actually get 23 different ones of those inside the M Tracker 3D area pack. You can either buy it individually or as a bundle. And most of the titles and motion VFX that you saw, motion graphics you saw in today's video were all from that bundle too. If you wanna try out, there will be a link down below. Thank you, Motion VFX, for sponsoring today's video and making this pack, which will save me a lot of time. Let's get back to the video. Yes, the distortion is a little bit worse in this compared to some of the newer versions that are out there. But I mean, look at all the video I'm showing you on the screen over this. Providing this subject is in the center of the frame. We're talking for video here. For photo, that can be easily corrected. But for video, as long as they're in the center of the frame, you really aren't gonna have any issues. It's more towards the edges and the corners where you start to see that distortion. Now you can put a filter on the front of this because it is a 72 mil filter thread. You will see it in the edges. You might have to zoom in to like 17 or 18 
and then you won't see it. That isn't an issue on the Sigma, the new Sigma that's out there. So that is one pro to get that over this if that's something you might need to use. Now saying that, I actually crank the aperture all the way up sometimes. I've gone to F22 with this if I didn't bring an ND filter because I'm lazy, but also because I always want everything to be in focus anyway. F22, not really gonna have any issues with that. So if it is super bright outside, go all the way to F22. A lot of the newer lenses do have upgraded features, buttons, switches, things that will do things that you might need. But if you just want something that's dead simple, easy to use, this might be the option for you. It literally zooms and it has a manual focus rim. There's no other switches or anything on here. It's very straightforward. You control everything in the camera and that's it. That might be a good thing for you. That might not be a bad thing for you. There's something about this lens that just will not let me get rid of it. I actually sold this a couple of years ago and then ended up buying it six months later because I missed it that much. At the time, there wasn't these other options available, but even now, it's there's something inside here just stopping me from wanting to sell it. So if you're looking for the cheapest, kind of best value ultra wide zoom lens or your first ultra wide zoom lens, Definitely take a look to see on Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, Craigslist, wherever you live, or even B&H used to see what's out there in terms of this lens, because you will not find something that gives you better value for that amount of money. 1635 F4. Don't sleep on it. That's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.